And if you're like me, you didn't have tools like AI and chat GPT to help you out for school assignments. You remember the good old days of hard covers, of encyclopedias, and physically going to a library? But those days are long gone for many of us. Classrooms and workplaces have all those tools at the ready. And a new study found that those tech tools come at a steep cognitive cost. Scripps News business and tech correspondent Maura Barrett is live for us in Chicago. Maura, good to see you. This is fascinating. Tell us about this new study. Well, Andrew, these, the findings from this study come at a crossroads when it comes to regulations. There's not a lot of them in place right now when it comes to AI, especially around education. 25 states have issued loose guidance, but it's still something that teachers and people in the education space keep telling me has them incredibly concerned. Chat GPT and it's like are ubiquitous in the high school. Students, they're, they're secretive about it. You know, they kind of know that they're not supposed to use it. Jeannie Barr, a high school history teacher in Chicago, says this academic year was a turning point when it came to students' AI usage. Some students are making poor choices when it comes to shortcutting the thinking process. You know, they're denying their brains the opportunity to build the capacity. All of the things that brain research tells us about how knowledge is acquired. Um, AI is doing that for them. Research from Common Sense Media, a nonprofit focused on bridging the gap for teachers and parents to new technology, found just how common the usage is in schools. Your research shows that 7 in 10 teens have already used AI. I mean, there's just no stopping it, it seems like. It's a fast-moving space. Educators are behind um, in terms of their usage of the technology, and parents are also behind. Um, in that same Dawn of AI report of those 70% of teens that are using AI, when we asked the specific parents of those teens if they thought that their child was using AI, only 38% of those uh, teens' parents thought that they were using AI. So parents are not um, uh, clued into the fact that kids are, are really using these technologies at, at pretty high rates. A recent MIT Media Lab study measured brain activity during an essay writing assignment. The subjects of the study were divided into three groups. One group used OpenAI's ChatGPT, one only used Google Search, and one group didn't use any resources. The study found the group relying on ChatGPT consistently underperformed at neural, linguistic, and behavioral levels. Researchers ultimately found the cognitive debt that appears when there's frequent use of LLMs. OpenAI, who owns ChatGPT, has not responded to Scripps News' request for comment. We feel like this shows what we would expect, um, which is that if you're offloading your thinking to AI, your brain is going to be less active. I think we have to make sure that we don't then leap to say that using AI is always going to be bad in education. It just means that we need to be really smart um, about how we use the tools. Torney explains there's a lack of clarity, though, in how AI should be implemented in education. 25 states have issued loose guidance from their departments of education. Illinois, where Barr teaches, is not one with any guidance. She says she ultimately wants her students to see AI as an asset, not a liability. Teachers are incredibly creative people, often, and are thinking all the time about how to bring lessons alive, how to engage kids, and so I don't want to see uh, blanket restrictions or blanket um, uh, rules uh, regarding AI about how to use it. Barr's concern in today's high-performing culture lies in students putting too much pressure on themselves to be perfect, leading them to cheat. We need to shower love on the uh, inexact uh, because in doing so will enable our students to free themselves up to, to make joyful mistakes. The real satisfaction of creating something beautiful doesn't come from that kind of um, shortcut. Now, there's an important caveat to this MIT study. It's still in the process of being peer-reviewed. That's something that typically happens before a study is published, but it takes about eight or nine months, and the researchers were adamant they wanted to get it out as soon as possible out of con concern for ChatGPT users, especially the high risk of impact, they say, on developing brains, Andrew. And Maura, you know, when the internet was still like a new thing and students were using it to inspire some of their classroom essays, teachers could go in and you could kind of Google and figure out pretty quickly who was doing the copy and pasting. But for AI, I imagine it's more complicated. Is there anything that educators are able to do to circumvent like the blatant use of this? 
It's definitely really tricky right now, and I'm sure that will develop, especially as people are using it more and more. Jeannie jokingly referred to it as an arms race of sorts and didn't want to give too many details about how they track just because then students will start doing something else. But something that her school does, she pointed out, is they actually do a baseline writing sample at the beginning of the school, school year, handwritten, no resources. And then they can use that to compare and contrast uh, any other work that gets submitted. Uh, she said that that they also they know the punctuation tells that come, sometimes come up uh, with ChatGPT and uh, believe it or not, the Wall Street Journal is actually reporting that um, the blue book sales, if you remember, handwritten blue books are actually up right now because so many teachers and professors are saying devices away. It's back to the handwritten, old-fashioned way of those those blue books that we all remember, maybe not so lovingly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scripps News business and tech correspondent Maura Barrett live for us in Chicago. Maura, thank you.